Hello everybody and welcome to the British Esports stream. This is of course Monday and today we've got a really great stream for you guys with a lot of really important updates and some fantastic um, conversation to be had. We're going to be talking about a lot of really good topics, um, including obviously the most recent launch of the BTEC uh, and the updates for the championships which will be coming live uh, from September this year. Um, so just quickly before we go, um, I'd just like to give you a few updates um, about the British Esports stream itself. Uh, on Wednesday last week, we had Layla, who came in as our game advisor for Splatoon 2 and did a guest takeover, and it was absolutely fantastic. Um, and on the back of that, we will be doing a guest takeover month next month, so all of July. We're going to be having loads of um, get guest hosts who come on and showcase their games, showcase their actions and what, what they're interested in. And we'll just get to have a lot of good content from, from our game advisors and, and other supporters of the BBA. Uh, this week, um, I've got myself with you now with this interview, uh, this panel. Uh, and then on Wednesday, uh, Dom is going to be taking on um, the co-founders of XL Esports in Fortnite and Rocket League uh, and asking them some questions whilst they play games, which should be a right laugh. So please do check in uh, to watch that as well. Um, right, so welcome everybody in the chat. Um, Temporally, hi, Gallahorn, Vault, Rinked, Legadif. Sorry if I'm butchering names. Spiron's in the chat as well. Welcome everybody. Um, so um, before we get started, I think it's important that you all see the, uh, see the video that obviously we, we released this morning um, it was I don't know what time some some something about eight o'clock this morning um, so please do check it out Morgan's put it all together uh, and this will give you a brief overview of what's happening in September the British eSport championships is a tournament run throughout the academic year for students aged 12 plus in schools and colleges across the UK this video will explain the new format changes for the 2020 to 21 championships year Previously, we had two individual seasons within our championships, winter and spring. This year, we are having one year long season, qualifiers and divisions. From October through to December, this will be the qualifying period. Teams will gain as many points as possible throughout this period. From January through to March, all teams will be split into divisions. Each team's final standing from the qualifying period will determine their division. Divisions will be split into Division 1 and Division 2. Each division will be divided into groups depending on each team's final standing from the qualifying period. At the end of each division, the top teams from both divisions will progress to the elimination stage. The semi-finals and finals will be held at a live event where your school or college can showcase their talent. This new format for the British Esports Championships allows for more teams to take part than before and more opportunities for schools and colleges to make their way to the top. They have the ability to face opponents of similar skill level, join a community of schools and colleges across the country and to feature on British Esports Championships content across our YouTube channel and social media pages. Get your school or college registered to the upcoming season of the Championships here. Good luck and have fun. All right, so uh, obviously that was the update. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed it. It was obviously a very well put together video. Thanks very much, Rinked, for, <laughs> for shouting that one out. Yeah, exciting times, lots of big changes. Uh, and without further ado, uh, I want to bring in our guests today, um, who we've got from a few co uh, colleges across the country who have been partaking in our champs over the last well, the last few years, some of them. Um, but yeah, I'd like to introduce him, but um, it's probably best if I let them introduce themselves. So welcome everybody to the stream. How are you all doing? Uh, let's go around the room, starting with you, Callum. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Callum Neal, and I work at Barnsley College. Uh, we've been delivering an eSports study programme um, since September 2019. That's coincided with us entering the, the champs as well. So we've, we've had a good experience as, as part of the champs. Um, excitingly, because of that, I've also been involved working alongside British Esports Association and Pearson this year in developing the new suite of BTEX, um, which again is really exciting for September 2020. And then uh, outside of 
my work at Barnsley College. I also work with Strategic Esports Group, who essentially are there to support um, new facilities, new education providers who are moving into esports, which, of course, I'm happy to discuss all three later. <laughs> Brilliant. Thank you, Callum. And uh, Neil, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Hi, I'm Neil Griffiths from Gower College, Swansea. I'm representing the uh, GCS Owls esports team today. Um, we'll be starting the Level 3 BTEC esports course in September as well. And uh, we're looking really forward to start to starting that up and starting the, the new league in September with all the new uh, exciting changes. Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you. And last but not least, Steve. Uh, yeah, my name's Steve. I work at uh, Colleague Gwent in Evervale in Wales as well. Um, we've been doing the British Esports Association competition for two years now. So um, we deliver a with an esports course as well uh, through UAL. So we'll talk about that with you later on as well. Amazing. All right, great. So now we've got acquainted with everybody. Um, thanks very much, everybody in the chat. Uh, Legadith, I don't know if you were on screen for like a frame there or not, but uh, if you were, you're now famous. Enjoy your time on uh, on Twitch. Uh, so he's also saying that green screen, try harding the screen. I'm assuming he's talking to you, Callum, there with your awesome background. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is um, a little shout out to all the students because they're all obviously in lockdown like the rest of us. So I thought I'd try and get them up behind me a little bit. Um, that's our esports room, our esports facility at the college, uh, which again, we, we converted last year to coincide with delivery of our esports study program. Um, so there you've got a little shot of of the guys um, just, just practicing prior to one of the esports fixtures last year. Very well behaved at the moment. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, they're, they're all they're all behaving impeccably. Yeah, they're perfectly motionless and quiet. I love it. Uh, so um, anyway, let's let's have a little chat about the the format video that I just showed you all. Um, what are your what are your general thoughts, uh, Steve? Yeah, really exciting. Um, hopefully, uh, my students will sort of just get into it and just just roll you know, with the whole thing. I think having a totally different format as well, especially with my second year students, they'll, you know, get more excited about, you know, going for it again, because a lot of them come from level two. So this would be like their third, third year. And I'm just hope I can get them all sort of back into the, the fray. I've, mm. I've had a few that have kind of drifted a little bit to other games and things like that, but I'm just, I just want to get them all on board. And I just think a, a new exciting format is going to work really well for them. Yeah, great. I mean, so obviously this is uh, a complete change from last year where we had two different separate seasons and we're now merging them into one yeah. long thing with some qualifiers. I mean, surely that, that presents a bit more kind of commitment from the teams, wouldn't you say, Neil? Yeah, I, I quite like the new format. It it also gives people a better chance as well. So um, less chance of getting knocked out early. Um, you guys, I suppose you can... Uh, give yourselves a reprieve if you get knocked out or if you lose a few games. So I think uh, our teams will prefer it. And like Steve, we've got some students who are on level two and now gone to level three. Some first year has gone to second year. So a new format might spruce things up as well. Um, we, last year was only our first season, so it's all pretty new to us anyway. But um, I'm liking the new format. Good, good. Well, I'm glad to hear it. Um, Callum? Yeah, likewise. Uh, again, I think as, as we've got students moving into their second year of study with us at, at the college around esports, it the new format it'll present them with just just an increase in their knowledge base around the, the ways and, and methods they can organise tournaments and competitions. Um, they've just recently taken part in the FIFA 20 lockdown championships as well, which again have followed a different format. So I think just the the variety of experiences that they've had in, in such a short space of time is really positive, and I think they'll they'll be looking forward to next season as well. Awesome. Yeah, no, that, that's great. Obviously, that tournament was with uh, our partners, AOC, as well. Um, we, yeah, we, we, we've actually done quite well for lockdown. We've managed to host two tournaments off the back of kind of nothing, really, and, and you know, looking to do more. So so uh, it's actually been a bit of a blessing in disguise. I know that's kind of a bit uh, iffy to say, as it were. But, um, you know, it's, it's good and it shows that esports is there and it, you know, stands stands through time and, and is able to provide for people where traditional things cannot. Um, so... Uh, just before we 
crack into the to the real meat of this of this panel. Uh, if you guys have any questions in the chat about uh, the format, or if you want to ask uh, any of our guests on stream today anything about their setup or or how they got to where they are today, uh, please do feel free to pop them in the chat. I will try and ask them if I can. If not, I'll make sure we have some time at the end for a Q and A. Um, so yeah, uh, let, let's uh, let's start with you, Callum, because um, I think you've probably got the biggest experience uh, and given your involvement, I think it's probably best if we start with you. Could you just talk us about your experience with the champ so far, how you got set up and kind of like what issues you faced? Yeah, the the initial um, setup really was trying to figure out from a from a sort of a timetabling point of view and, and student recruitment point of view, how we were going to get our teams together. Um, we started our education program in September 2019 of which we have 36 learners full-time learners enrolled to our esports study program so straight away we had that pool of students there who we knew were going to be interested in competing um, within the different games titles but then uh, across the college then we had to um, ensure that we were able to advertise the team and market the team because it was such a new concept for the for the college and for the area and for the town that um, you know ensuring that we got the right people involved um, was really important. And one of the things that we did uh, to start that off was just, just to open that up for absolutely everybody and, and have it as a, a participation afternoon where on Wednesday afternoons, students, regardless of the department or the building or the campus that they were in, could come down and, and just just to sort of free play, have a bit of fun. And, and what we found from that, the most positive thing from that was just that sense of community that um, we had lots and lots of students from completely different backgrounds, some older students, some younger students, some that were interested in sports, some that were interested in construction, some that were interested in agriculture, um, some that were in, interested in science, but they all had this one passion for esports where um, without it, they would have sort of just existed at college in isolation in their own little areas. So um, that was the first process really in, in trying to do that. And then We've, we've been on a learning journey then and you know and what's been really nice to see is that the students have now been able to take leadership um, we've had the the natural leaders have emerged within each of the teams um, and have started to really take ownership of, of what happens on a Wednesday afternoon at the college and, and almost become the coaches of the teams as well which has been really positive that's awesome you know I, I obviously my job is the schools and colleges liaison officer so I spend a lot of time speaking with various different teachers who are taking charge of this project on behalf of their school or college uh, and, and you know lot one of the main questions I get asked is, you know, how should I approach the student body? You know, how, how do I select the team and things like that? And, you know, there are so many different ways of doing it. Uh, lots of colleges that I've spoken to have, have have done it departmentally. So they said, right, well, only the media and the you know, media and games design students can be involved with this thing. But that's really interesting that you've opened up to the whole college and got such a good community there. I, I'm, I love it. That's, that's, that's fantastic to hear. Uh, so, Neil, t tell us a little bit about your experience with the championship so far. Obviously, you're, uh, you're fresh-faced. Yeah, yeah. We we were asked to, to look at going into esports, so um, we kept it within our IT students first of all. Um, I didn't know too much about uh, esports and Overwatch and stuff, so I asked the students who would be interested in playing, and um, we had well three teams worth of players who wanted to do, enter the Overwatch, and one team went to the um, Rocket League as well. Um, and in fairness, uh, the, the, the first time they just stuck with their mates and we took a bit of a beating in the first season. Yeah. And, then, and then the students realised that it's more competitive than they thought. So they put together stronger teams then and um, the students organised uh, trials and stuff. And then we had like players like Dominus and Ace who kind of started to take the lead and st started trying to get organising trials and stuff. Brilliant. And, this year during lockdown, we've asked for more players. We've gone more college wide. And um, in the last few weeks, we've been doing trials in the day and stuff. And we've picked up four new great players from other courses within the college. Fantastic. So, so things are starting to grow. And the, the students are taking more of a lead now instead of, instead of leaving the old guy like me trying to organize it and everything. Uh, don't worry about that too much. It's good. It's good to give them autonomy. You know, uh, I, I yeah. feel like it. That they'll be able to grow the structure and and put it in a way that will shape it for the for the next generation or the next year groups, the next future. So, uh, Steve, what about you? and your your experience? Yeah, so similar to Callum's, where we had um, in our first year, we opened it up to 
the whole of the campus. So wow. we had all our art students, our, our own students, A level students coming in. And obviously they all that had that whole kind of vibe of like, you know, we've, we've got to meet these new uh, people we'd never would have met and things like that. But it was it was tough because obviously we had different timetables. And, you know, we, we had students turning up late and things like that. So it was quite hard. So the second year this year just gone, we've just had, we had it with our esports kind of course. We had issues there as well where we you know, had students that, um, like I said, moving on to things like uh, Siege and obviously the new Valorant game just coming out, things like that. But we'd, um, I'm going to open it up again this year just to see how much better. But our problem is our colleges with four campuses. So unfortunately, I can't tap into like Newport or Cross Keys and things like that because obviously they have their own team and things like that. So I can't get a, a massive mix and they obviously can't play online because they need to be together. So we've had different issues and things like that, but it's been a really good learning sort of curve and for ourselves, you know, going forward into the actual course itself. So but we're going to, again, we're going to open it up I think we we missed out an opportunity to get quite a few different students, so we're gonna um, hopefully sit <laughs> come September we'll be all be back and we'll literally mm -hmm. open it up to everybody. We'll hold it on on the um, Freshers Fair and we'll just we'll just nice. get all our students. Yeah. So, but so yeah. You, yourself and Callum have both opened it up from the off. Uh, Neil yeah. Neil kept it in-house for the first season and then decided to open it up so i think the general consensus then is it's really to you know be open from the very beginning and and, yeah, and hold trials definitely. and stuff because it because it is quite competitive you know the the, the the people competing in this league they aren't novices you know they've been playing for years they're, they're uh, excellent at the games that they, they play so yeah there's, there's no easy competition here um so all right, i'm glad we all kind of came to the same conclusion there about kind of student entry into the program uh so how, how how did you um kind of get it approved uh with your college uh at the beginning you know how did the process go was it was it a student-led initiative and then did you have to take it on to to your slts or was it uh one of your ideas and then kind of just implemented it because you had the power or how did that work uh let's start with you steve because i you, you just finished okay yeah um yeah so Pretty much, I'd heard about the the the, the whole esports British esports association through a colleague who had just been to the world um, career. No, is it the uh, world skills? World, world skills, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So he just came back and said, you know, there's this esports thing. We had initially been teaching for years. I've been teaching a media course, and it, it gradually kind of started seeing lower, lower numbers to the point where it was like nine. Okay. Um, so I just jumped straight on this and was like, we've got to, we've got to go on this. And for the first year, we'd had 30 students. So it was a massive, so there was no, it was a no brainer. So I had no issues with my, my staff, my, um, my head of school or any of that to, to sort of get this going. They were just like, yep, yeah, there's a, you've got your own class. We're lucky we had our own classroom. So, uh, you know, I developed that into an esports room. We've got no other classes in there. So we've, we've got the, We've got no problems whatsoever what, doing was, this. Was it difficult getting the the kit or the funding, or did you, did you have to get permission uh, to run it, or did you just say I'm going to run with this and uh, wish me luck? No, luckily at the time I had a school, she was quite um, sort of uh, proactive, so she would got me uh, another set of 21 like high end PCs. And oh wow! We were looking there. Even high, I, luckily as well over the holidays, I've been speaking to HyperX aid centres. All the keyboards, keyboard mice and the mice mats and things like that for us to use. And my campus director like got us a load of chairs sorted out. So we've we're kitted out and it looks the business. So, <laughs> so Well I'm where's hoping... where's the fancy background, Steve? I know, I know, <laughs> I know. Well I've got my fancy shirt on. We've got our esports katana shirt, so very nice, very nice. Yeah, representing everywhere. Uh, Neil, tell us a little bit about your your experience with with uh, getting permission, getting funding. How did you go down those routes? Yeah, it was a bit of a strange one. The deputy principal must have got an email from Esports Wales um, asking, you know, did we were we interested in esports and stuff. So the the deputy approached me and said, what, "What's this esports stuff? Why aren't why aren't you doing it?" And we were like, "Shock! Wow! Yeah, we'd love to." 
Um, so I looked into, you know, what was out there and I, that's what I came across British esports. And I asked the students, would this be something they'd be interested in? And um, they said, yes, our deputy principal and our learning area managers was well up for it basically he said, just go with it. Um, we already had some pretty good spec gaming machines, um, but we put in for more funding and we had newer ones. And then That's I, lucky. Yeah, and then I asked Stone for, we buy a lot of our computers from Stone Computers. Yep. But I asked them if they would sponsor us. Um, I'm thinking I'd get a few T-shirts and stuff. I'm probably spilling the beans a bit. And then they came back and said they were working with Dino PC and they provided, and they worked with them, um, AMD, Asus, Corsair, and all the rest of them. And they, they gave us 16 pretty high-spec machines then. Amazing. I mean, if you don't ask, you don't get, right? That's right. And um, the students then went and we made our own mouse mats. Um, hey. So they, we went branding crazy after that. Um, we saw, I did see the Katana's um, Twitter pages and I saw they had their own shirts. So we've... We did get sponsored shirts with um, Dino PC and AMD and all the rest of it. But just as they were due to be delivered, we, we got stuck with the uh, COVID crisis. So, so we got a YouTube studio. We got our uh, gaming machines. Um, we got our shirts. Just can't get into college to use them, unfortunately. <laughs> but we were going to have a big launch event. Um, I was hoping to get colleges in Wales like Merthyr and Esports Wales and Katana's. I was hoping to get people down to have like some kind of competition with us in a big opening event, but everything got put on hold then. Um, so I still hope I still want to do a big launch event with esports and everybody, but it'll have to be probably perhaps March or something like that now. Yeah, well, f- fingers crossed it all clears up soon, you know, and we can we can kind of go back to a bit more of mm-hmm. normality. Uh, so. Callum, uh, fill us in a little bit about uh, your kit, because obviously, I mean, I can see it right there. It looks fantastic. You're sweet. Um, have you put much investment into it, or did it? Were you lucky enough to be to just have it like that? Maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah, no, we uh, we had nothing. So that room, that room behind us was just uh, you know four walls and a carpet and some old old tables and chairs. It was a you know a traditional classroom that we used, and um, so we we didn't really have anything in that, that, that we thought would be appropriate to be able to not only run the games but to be able to use as a classroom as well and um, to be able to deliver the quality of education that we wanted to deliver so um we had some initial skepticism from from senior leadership team i think i think rightly so because you know the the and I think a lot of people have experienced that so the more colleges and schools that I speak to who have the idea around esports it's what is that is the first question. What are yeah. esports? What is esports? What on earth are you talking about? Um, I mean, I'm I'm from a sports background traditionally myself as well. So so within my area, um, you know, the first thing was well, that's not sports. You know, there's we deliver sports courses. Why are we going to have people sat in gaming chairs who are, who are sedentary and, and not physically active? And then so we had a real job of work to do where um, we had to look at the industry statistics, the industry data. Once we were able to gather that information and present that appropriately to, to senior leaders and say, look, this is what esports is about. These are all the additional benefits of esports. You know, when we're talking about things like leadership and communication and teamwork and reaction time and all of the things that we that we all know um, in the esports world. And, and then we started to link that with the benefits of physical activity to esports and the benefits of a healthy lifestyle. We looked at professional teams. We looked at the, the, the sort of elite level of esport around their training programs. And, and as soon as we started to present the, the, the facts and the figures and the statistics, then, um, of course, that changed straight away. And yeah, wow, that sounds amazing, which it is. And I think that's the first, that's the first battle. And, um, you know, we've had that, we've had that as well locally from schools who, where we look at the the schools where we normally recruit from within our area um again from from schools we've had the same questions so we've had to ensure that we're well prepared for that um and then equally i'm I'm sure steve might have been the same as well in starting the study program um from parents as well who are you know my son my daughter's not coming to sit and play games all day and and again we've had to make sure that we've we've got all the the facts and figures that we were able to present around the industry around the the sort of progression into the esports industry the transferable skills that you gain from esports um and that in turn with um 
sort of the research that we'd done and speaking to students, of, of course, yeah. we were then able to convince the team that, that this is the facility we need. These are the specifications that we need. Also in that process as well, uh, we had a lot of support from British Esports Association as well. So I think anyone who is wanting to sort of look look into starting this thing, then the guys at British Esports are fantastic to us in, in, in helping us to get set up as well. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> it's not just not just me. There is a whole team of us, and we, we do work very hard. And I mean, that is that is that is my job. You know, I'm I'm here to go around and, and speak to you know teachers like yourselves, uh, give you the equipment, the knowledge that you need to kind of present to you to the higher ups and say, look, this is a viable uh, uh, extracurricular activity. We we need to be implementing this in our college system uh, or school system, uh, and 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 I'll be the guy who you know provides you with the tools um, that you need to, to to get that argument across and 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 basically teach people. You know, it's educating uh, the educators on uh, <laughs> on ways they can better their systems. So um, yeah, thank you very much for that. That's that's great, Callum. Um, so all three of you now have experienced at least a full season. You know, from start to finish. Um, now, and I know this is something um, that we try to talk to at the end of season, but by the time end of season rolls around, it's like people are uh, breaking up, people are, you know, teachers go into shutdown mode and holiday mode, and, you know, you kind of lose that uh, that edge. So the question I want to ask is, uh, what experience have you seen through students, you know, ha from, from day one when you started running the course to uh, at the end, you know, what kind of growth have you seen within them as individuals is there any particular people who stand out is there any you know, friendships that have been born and things like that um because you know th these are the kinds of case studies that are great to shout about and we don't often hear about them enough so um if i don't know if you have any you might not but <laughs> it'd be great to hear if you do uh let's let's start with you uh steve um yeah we've <laughs> he's done... like don't pick me don't pick me <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm just trying to think of something now um yeah we had to just yeah so uh, quite a few students, you know, quite strong. We had about three or four that really stood out and really want to push, um, continue, you know, especially, especially with the whole um, lockdown, they wanted to continue sort of doing things. So we've got uh, some students that are taking on um, sort of managing a team for like a call, I think it's Call of Duty. They are all 18. Um, these guys are playing esports Wales. I don't know if you've heard of these guys. They're doing the competition with them. Um, there are also a couple of students uh, that are just helped me out doing a lockdown FIFA tournament with the Welsh Schools FA. This is like a non-profit um, organisation, and we just we've just been doing that now over the last few weekends, and they've been helping me uh, sort of set that up and running it with all the students so that's been quite good i had like 28 schools initially like um, kind of awesome. going for that that's so, really yeah, good that's, yeah that's been tough like, with two kids around my legs trying to help sort of get that sorted out and yeah. it's been a bit chaotic but it's been you know it's been a good really good experience with them as well so you know asking them any questions and they come back to me like like a little uh what's the word um, like a like an admin team sort of helping me out and stuff like that so yeah it's been it's been a few not 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 so many as i'd have liked but you know it's, it's early days it's, it's been it's been quite new and it's for us it's been as tutors as well it's been a whole new experience so um yeah, yeah. definitely uh i mean neil you, you've obviously probably got quite a lot to say on this because your students have taken the initiative you know they, they've led the charge you know so they've obviously got a real passion for it already so tell us a little bit about you know what what they were like on day one and what they are now yeah i i don't know what, what it's like for the other guys in the stream but we used to have like level one level two level three and first and second years and they wouldn't really mix they would just be their own classes but as soon as we started the sports and picking teams and getting practice sessions together and they're all it, they've got different classes talking to each other. So we've got a much better mix of students. So all sort of talking together, all becoming involved together. So we, we noticed a lot more teamwork um, from the students. Um, and also um, students helping design logos, helping design T-shirts. Yeah, that's a big um, thing, isn't it? Yeah, and then people like Ace, or, or yeah, I should say Yestin, Jake, Kai, a couple of the students who, who sort of taken captain's roles really. It's been 
you know, fallen upon them and they, they've been organizing the trials. Um, the other lecturer who supports me, Kieran, it, it's not, not they, we don't face difficulties in dropping players or moving players because they, they deal with all that nasty stuff for, <laughs> on so, our behalf, really. So do the other students kind of look to them for, you know, leadership and yeah, decision-making yeah, they, and things? Yeah, definitely. They're the most committed players and they're probably some of the better players as well. Um, I, sh I should, you know, and we've organised lots of events where um, they've taken us on uh, as lecturers and we've taken them on. Um, we've had like, sort of a team building day where um, one of the students, Carolyn, set up a YouTube studio for us. Um, so he's not a big, doesn't really play the game so much, but he set up the YouTube studio for us. So sort of myself and Kieran were commentating on the games that went on and stuff and that, <laughs> that brought everyone together. And yeah, I've seen a few of the uh, the Owls uh, live streams that have been going that's right, on. Yeah, we, we done, and, and there's been other things like I think it was HGS Esports ran a um, Smash Brothers competition and one of our guys, Mr. Sneaky, was in that and he did really well. So it's got them looking at other esports and got them um, being involved with what other colleges are doing as well. So they're looking outside of just Overwatch and just what we, the British esports are doing. And then they're looking at other colleges and joining their events as well. So there's been quite a big growth from those. Yeah, students. brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Callum, I feel like you've been itching to talk for the last few minutes. Uh, why don't you fill us in? Yeah, some, some similar stories as well. Um, it, it's it's great just to hear that, first of all, I think the the identity of of esports and the identity of the players and the teams has, has been an interesting development and something that I've enjoyed watching very much, you know, as from, from my point of view in a sports background, our traditional sports teams, you know, our, our netball team, our rugby team, our football team, our basketball team, they all have their own identity and they all have their own groups. And in speaking to the students as they've gone on this journey and, you know, they've got the kits and they've got the branding and they recognize, they're now recognized as a team. Um, sort of when they're walking around campus and, and they're in the building and, and it's in speaking to them, some of the comments that they've said is, you know, when they were at school or when they, when they were on previous previous courses studying something different, um, you know, they've not really liked to speak out about video gaming and sort of, you know, they, they might have thought that people might have mocked them or might have laughed at them, whereas now they're, they're confident in saying, you know, video gaming's cool and, and I'm part of this team. And, and it's gone full circle where, we had lots of people thinking, again, even from a student's point of view, as they're walking past the room and what's that and, and what are they doing in there? Are they just playing Fortnite? And, you know, these sorts of stereotypes, whereas now we've got the captains and the leaders of our sports teams also wanting to join the esports team. Um, and we had players during lockdown who play in the sports teams who also represented our esports team as well. So it, we, we've seen that that growth which i think that's a really important part of it and then the second thing i would say the individuals that are involved just just the personal development and, and the growth that i've seen in these young people is just fantastic and i i can think of examples where you know week one of of them starting college um you know they, they don't want to speak to anyone they're sort of used to being in in the shells and, and not really confident and and we've got lots of people who have some social anxiety issues and um don't really have that sort of social confidence whereas i look towards the sorts of things they're doing at the end of the year and again as as the gents mentioned they're delivering events to to the students and they're leading events to other teachers and they've got secondary schools in that they're now teaching and and i think wow that's the same person that i met in september um <laughs> And I think it's just the environment, you know, it's the, the environment. It's not like the traditional classroom environment that they're used to. And, and they've just been able to thrive. It's been fantastic. That is fantastic. You know, and I, I totally kind of understand, um, like you were saying about the identity, you know, I, um, when I was kind of growing up and into my video games, I didn't really want to tell anybody, you know, it was it wasn't necessarily considered a cool thing, even though it was fun. And when you were in a social group, you know, that was kind of, uh, an activity that you could all partake in together but then when I went home and I played competitively on my own people were kind of like mm, no not it's not that cool so I, I, I get it and, it and it's great to see that that's that's kind of forming uh, as an identity in, in the college and I'd lo love to see that spread um, so just quickly before we move on to the BTEC I'm just conscious of a time here um, and of course we do have a Q&A at the end thank you very much for your question so far Billy uh, Billy on 240 i will try and get to that as well uh, if you do have any questions feel free to ask them and i will i'll come to them at the end uh, but just quickly before we move on to the btech guys um 
I know we've covered a lot of it, but if you had like say a one liner that you could say uh, a recommendation to anybody who's looking to get involved in esports, uh, whether it's with us or with somebody else, what what would your one line of advice be? Um, who looks ready? Uh, dip, dip, doing it, I suppose. Let's go with uh, Callum. Go on, off you go. Um, I would say to do your research before you start and then present the facts. Get knowledgeable, definitely. Uh, Steve? Yeah, just play play games, have fun. Just just go for it. Just go, go for it. Okay. And Neil? I'll just steal Mike's logo and say just do it. Just do it. Yeah, so don't hold back. Don't hold back and uh, and do your research. <laughs> so, yeah, different methods there. Yeah, no, I think I, I always like to say, uh, you know, get knowledgeable about what, you, what you're getting involved in first, but definitely the next step is just go for it. You know, so thank you very much, guys. All right, so on to the B-Tech. Now, I know, um, Callum, you've obviously been very heavily involved. Um, Neil, you are um, planning on, on running the VTech come September, and Steve, you've got a little bit something a little bit different that we'll come to in a moment. Um, so, first of all, um, let's start with Callum because you've been quite heavily involved in the VTech. So, why don't you just give me a little bit about your thoughts on the qualification uh, and where you see it going, and of course, the involvement that you've had thus far. Yeah, so I've been involved in in the initial consultation of, of when we were looking when uh, PSN and Richard Sports were looking at developing the qualification. They came up to visit the, visit the students and spoke to the students, and I think what it's done is it's addressed a much needed gap in education and and um, you know where we've got universities and. and and even colleges in America where, you know, people are delivering esports degrees and, and have esports scholarships available. We've now got esports degrees in the UK. And I think this presents a really unique opportunity for students who have that passion um, in esports to, to pursue that and, and to really broaden the horizons in, in also into a variety of other careers. The, the way the qualification has been written and, and made up, and, and people will understand this when they look at the units if they haven't done so already, is you've got some units that are linked to sport, you've got some units that are linked to business and enterprise entrepreneurship, and then you've got the, the other units which are linked to your, you know, your media and to, your, to the digital side of things, where um, as, a, as a college or as a, as a provider, depending on your expertise and experience you can you can lean on that but i think most importantly for the students is it it provides a, a real balance for we get lots of students who come into into colleges and, and and sixth forms who don't really know what jobs they want to do for the rest of their lives um and i think this provides an opportunity for them to study something that they're passionate about something that they love yep. and then to open up those doors and it might be that they go oh actually i think i might really like a career in health or actually i might really like to go and study enterprise entrepreneurship at university or it might be that i do want to still go down the games design route and, and i think it it's a blend of all of those areas which gives people time and, and gives them that two to three years at college to to really understand which which avenue they want to go down um so i think i think that's a really positive thing about it yeah yeah it's, it's a solid foundation definitely definitely uh so neil you're you, you're obviously planning on doing it as well um what's what's your thoughts yeah we're, look, we're looking forward to it um myself and the lecturers we've had a chat and we've learned a lot ourselves in running the events that we've run, coming up with the branding, coming up with the sponsoring, you know, coming up with the design of spec machines and all the rest of it. Um, and, and it also gives the students another option as well. So it's a whole new um, area for them to enter into. And like Carlin was saying, there's, you know, there's a lot of good topics and the like introduction to esports skills and strategies. Um, I'm reading off the list, video production, which is, really, which is a good skill. Uh, business applications as well so it, it does give the students a lot of um uh, I'm, I'm seeing it as a broad band to go into so they, they could decide to go back into networking for example because there, there is a networking element there they could like to do the games design so they could go back into programming and stuff like that or they may well decide to, to do a marketing degree or digital marketing you know there's a wide range of um I'm hoping that when I speak to students and parents that they're not going to just think this is two years of playing games. Um, I'm hoping that they're going to see that, you know, running events, customer immersion experiences, mm. uh, live stream broadcasting. Um, these are areas that students can make a lot of money in if they, you know, if they make a successful YouTube channel, they, they can, they can be, become quite rich or 
nice, uh, good uh, Twitch streams, um, Twitter accounts. So there's, there's such a, a wide range and to follow on with that. Um, and I, th I think that there's a lot of uh, separate ca um, career progression paths that they can go into. Um, and, you know, it would be great to see somebody uh, enter London Spitfire or something like that, one of our players go on to that level of the game as well. And but there's such a wide variety where we're really looking forward to sort of starting the course, really. Yeah, fantastic, fantastic. I mean, a lot, a lot of the things that you've mentioned that you know you've been you've been up to, uh, you know, get, doing the branding and all the design and all that. You know, those are the kind of things that will be incorporated into the BTEC anyway. So you potentially, you know, use those as case studies for the BTEC uh, to kind of educate your you know students who are doing it. Look, this is how we did it before. You know, go do something similar, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, so that's fantastic to hear. Now, Steve. Uh, the, the black sheep of the group. Why don't you fill us in on your uh, on your plans? Because you've got yeah. some unusual ones. Well, basically, we 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 were under pressure to sort. Of, well, I was to as a course leader to to make sure that the course was running nineteen twenty sort of year. So obviously, I had to sort of the the, the speaker to Tom Dore, British Esports Association. I knew that there was a B Tech going on in the background. But obviously we had no, we, there was nothing I could do until like this this time this year. So I had to come up with something. So a friend of mine was doing, a colleague, sorry, was working, was doing game design at Cross Keys, one of the other campuses. So with UAL. So it basically is a creative media course, but the UAL allowed you to, uh, University of London, um, basically allows you to kind of, do uh, take their units and just do what you want with them and put whatever spin on what you wanted so it was a, for us at the time it was a no-brainer um so we basically ended up with i think it was seven units which we had to we condensed down into three briefs um, which was shout casting and like the the whole sort of video editing side of things careers looking at esports and the last one was which i always forget um coaching which was like website design and things like that so we'd kind of had that and then their fmp which was their final major project where they could kind of which was their event unfortunately covid turned up and they yeah. had to do all had to do it all online so it's it, it's kind of very very similar very similar to btech but the btech wasn't there for us so we just ended up having to do go with that there's i'm not saying that we're not going to do the btech eventually no uh, <laughs> yeah we were we were with the OCR originally, the um, OCR Media, and like I said, we were we had for the last several years we were um, eight nine students things like that. So we were basically almost a dead course, but I single handedly saved it. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I mean, you did the best with what you had, and, and obviously. Well, to, to go from, like I said, from eight students to yeah. then 30 students was just bonkers. Yes, it's really, really impressive. We, we had the same issues with a lot of, like, um, Neil and Callum saying with, like, the student, um, st um, parents thinking, oh, they're going to be doing is playing games. And we've got, we had a lot of issues where they were sort of, like, were getting, like, sidetracked with games. So we've obviously had that year of we can now implement a lot of like stricter rules and make sure that things don't, it doesn't go down that, but it is, you know, we've figured out a lot. So we are, we are on the right track, but like I said, in the next year or two, I, you know, I'm going to see how the, the BTEC pans out and, and let you guys do all the hard work first. And then I'll, I'll nip in and steal all your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, go go nuts! You know, that's, they're out there. To, we're we're here to educate people in esports and and spread yeah. the word. So you know, the the thing I love about this industry so much is like nobody's here to you know, it's not dog eat dog. You know, we're all here with the same goal in mind, and nobody's trampling on each other's feet. We're just trying to reach the same goal, which is you know to improve the level of UK esports. And and that that really what you've just said there, you know, kind of sums it up. Look, you're you're doing your own thing. We're doing a thing, but it doesn't matter because it's all the end goal that we're, we're trying to get to so happy days um obviously you've just explained your structure a little bit differently uh, I, I presume you're going to continue that for at least another year maybe expand it yeah we'll see yeah. how it goes yeah like I said, and just echoing what you said just like the whole idea everybody's kind of working together i've spoke to i think i've emailed you callum i think and i've spoke to neil loads about stuff and it's at this level level three has been brilliant like just to just to organize stuff not sure about 
the university sort of side of things is a different kettle of fish. I've mm. noticed some chaotic sort of chaos going on there. But, yeah, well, we won't go there. <laughs> uh, no, but at level three, it's been so nice. It's just, it's just everybody's just out to help each other, and it's kind of re- kind of nice and relaxed, and just seeing, just nice to see where it's all going. It's a team effort. It's a team effort. Mm, Cool. Uh, I've got a question here from Billy that I promised I'd answer, Billy on 240. Uh, I'm really interested in the eSports BTEC course. I have currently around 8 to 10 people that also want to participate in the course. How do I approach my college about it? Uh, now, I'm not sure if, if Billy on is a student or a teacher from that, um, but I mean, what would your advice be, uh, guys? I'll leave it as an open floor, Whoever's, whoever wants to answer that one. We, we, are, we, are, we will be advertising it on the college website um when you when you go to the courses list there, there should be one there um but all it, it is really new and with the, all the covid stuff it's difficult to get all these changes done and advertised quickly but um you know for example we've got the gcs owls twitter so you could go on there you could also uh, tweet our main college to contact us or um it will start to appear on the college prospectus as well or just get in touch with us directly really contact your I would say contact your IT department the, the IT faculty and they'll probably be able to put you in touch with that department because uh, a lot of the, a lot of it is crossover so they'll be the same lecturers hopefully yeah definitely like media media courses just speak to the media department and IT they're the ones that kind of are the ones that get the ball rolling and or just go and see the head of school or like campus director and just tell them what's going on show them the facts and figures and then obviously on the British Esports Association website, there's all the stuff that, you know, for the parents. So that's really useful. If you're a student or a staff, I suppose you can, you just use all that stuff and all the, the you know, it's all there. It's all there for you to see, to basically say, you know, this, this works. This is it's really good. Yeah, I mean, obviously there's the, the whole... Um... Uh, information and structure of the modules on the Pearson website. You can go just go to the Pearson and, and Google the esports course there. Uh, you'll find all the modules and all the information about them there. Uh, and of course, please do check out our website as well, which has a ton of information on it. Um, okay, so we're doing pretty good for time actually. Um, I was going to ask uh, how is how is the uh, the BTEC going to look within your college structure? Um, but I think we've kind of answered most of that just through general chat unless I've, unless anybody wants to fill in something there um but if not no worries um, i think yeah just one point on that elliot please i yeah, think sure. just for for centers that are looking to deliver it just to note the different qualification sizes that that are on offer and, and some people might choose to deliver it alongside a levels and it might be a, a standalone thing or some people might choose to deliver it as a, as a full-time qualification um you've got the extended certificate, the foundation diploma, the diploma and the extended diploma, which, um, you know, in terms of like equivalences and A-level equivalences sort of go to one A-level, one and a half A-levels, two A-levels and then three A-levels. Um, so I think there's there's that level of flexibility there where if people are looking at running a two-year a two program, um, you know, people can either work towards the diploma or work towards the extended diploma. Um, so I think it, it, it's quite flexible in that sense as well for, for centres who are considering um, to delivering that. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's obviously some key information there that people need to know. So, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, right, it's uh, last chance for anybody in the chat. If you want to ask any more questions, please do so now because we'll be wrapping this up fairly shortly. Um, but if there's any any other points, uh, gentlemen, that you wanted to raise uh, before we before we end the stream today. I think just, just from my point, Elliot, as we discussed before the stream, um, my additional work with Strategic Esports Group, just, just to offer my support for people really in, in that initial phase, if if people are considering um, moving into esports and and whether it's delivering esports education or whether it's looking at esports sort of from a facility development point of view, um, then that's the work that I'm doing with strategic esports group at the moment um we're a subsidiary of strategic leisure who've worked for over 30 years um in in delivering facilities all over the world um so i think the again the key point there would be to to reach out to people um again reach out to british esports association reach out to other colleges that, that are delivering that and if there's anybody there who who 
may need sort of a business case or a revenue model putting together and that's the work that we do um essentially we look at the sort of needs of the facility um the local area we look at any funding opportunities that are available within within esports and and sort of whether it's physical activity whether it's um from a digital point of view and then look really at identifying capital costs putting a business case together developing that 10-year revenue model um alongside some facilities are working with us at the moment and they're looking at delivering esports education so that forms part of it as well um, other facilities are from a leisure point of view and are looking at implementing esports facilities into either new leisure facilities or existing leisure facilities to provide that variety as well um, so again just to offer my help and services there yeah that sounds really interesting i mean i've had quite a few um conversations with various sports clubs across the country actually since lockdown has happened particularly they've all gone okay how do I get involved as, a, as my you know my leisure my leisure club or my sport club you know where's where's the provision for uh, you know sports clubs within esports so um yeah no that's 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 brilliant thank you thank you very much Callum for, for highlighting that yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we're more or less done. Uh, I just want to ask you guys quickly if you could just recap your uh, like your journeys, you know, where you finished this year in terms of uh, in the league, you know, um, what you're hoping to achieve next year. Uh, have you changed rosters and things like that? What's your strategy going into September? Uh, let's start with uh, you, Steve. No problem. Um, yeah. So um, like I said, I'm going to be opening up to the whole of my my campus just to get a variety of students to see what happens and basically just push it a little bit more um, I like what say Neil was saying with like doing a lot more sort of events and getting them sort of interested in it the initial roll up and, and not just having them come in and just play and then go in I've just found that a little bit sort of kind of got a bit stale so I want to make it a little bit more of a club for them a proper like team sort of environment and uh, yeah, just sort of really push it a little bit more this year. Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, Neil? Um, yeah, we're going to be, um, at the request of the students, we're going to be more like um, Stevenson there, we're going to be more formalising things. So we're going to be putting proper time aside for practice, um, making okay. more club feel to it. We we did finish, we were in the quarterfinals this year. Very nice. Um, so we've got the hashtag fly higher now. So <laughs> I like it. I like yeah, it. Yeah, so does that mean that. then? Sorry to interrupt. Does that mean that you weren't practicing like dedicated sessions last year? No. And no, you still no, got to the quarterfinals. No. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. And they, they 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 have told me that the team this year is stronger. So that's what they've said. So they've made some big promises to me this year. They, awesome. They got the kit. They got they got the t-shirts. They got the computers. So. I'm right, looking forward yeah, to so see that. We're then. hoping to get. We're hoping to get an esports coach in from esports wheels as well oh so, look out look out everyone else yeah. uh yeah neil's got yeah, some... yeah, very serious. <laughs> yeah, well that's good I'm, I'm really really glad to hear it yeah uh callum any other competitive elements that you got going on um i'm not well, asking you to give away your... no no we're um for for us, we you know we're we're trying to grow the amount of teams that we've got and and the to provide the opportunities for the students to get involved, but um competitively they sort of just missed out on the on the knockouts this year um which i think they were one place away the overwatch team so they were a little bit disappointed but um learned a lot and, and i think that from again from my point of view and and what i think's great about esports is is and we've discussed it a lot today is that student ownership so what i'm looking for more now is to yes to grow the amount of teams that we've gotten to, to grow the participation numbers even further but it's really supporting the students to do that that's not something that that i'll be doing you know i'm not going to be the one that's going to be going out and advertising that's what i want my students to do the, the leaders the captains um you know we, our, our esports captain this year for the overwatch team is delivered presentations to the team and i think if i could only get my football captain to deliver presentations to their team you know and, and trying to trying to look at in our college what traditional sports can learn from esports and then also where esports can learn from traditional sports as well and, and combine the two. Um, so I, I'm looking forward to that, to, to seeing as, as the students become second years and they, they start to take a lot more onus in terms of their leadership uh, abilities, which ultimately that's going to provide them for a better career in the industry. You know, that's, that's going to give them that confidence, those skills that we've discussed today. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see, to see where the students take it next year. Awesome. 
All right, guys. Well, I think that more or less wraps up the, the stream today. So thank you ever so much for being with me and, and obviously talking about your situations, your experiences and things like that. Uh, and of course, the BTEC. So um, yeah, a, bit, a big shout out to, to Callum, Neil and Steve for joining me today. And uh, thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Cheers, guys. See you thank later. You. Cheers. Bye. All right then. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, that was our guests on today. Thank you ever so much for being with us. Uh, just a few more things. Like I said at the beginning, um, we have got our uh, stream on Wednesday, which is uh, the co-founders of XL Esports. Uh, that's Kieran and Joel. They're going to be playing um, some games with Dom. Uh, I think it's Fortnite and Rocket League, which should be very interesting. But uh, we'll we'll find that out whether they're any good or not come Wednesday, and that'll be at 4 p.m. Um, also on the end of the month, we have got our British Esports show match, so that'll be Friday night. Uh, it won't actually be on this channel, it'll be hosted on the British Army Esports, uh, which hopefully Sacco Potatoes will be able to provide the link for me uh, in the chat. But please do come watch that, that'll be the uh, British Esports Association uh, League of Legends team versus the British Army's League of Legends team. So that should be a really, really good one to watch as well. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for joining me. and. Um, I've been Elliot. It's been a pleasure to have, have you guys on the chat today. Thank you so much for your questions and your posture checks and your hydrates. And uh, autographs cost money. So, you know, if you want one, uh, you'll have to pay the bucks. But as for me, thank you very much. See you next time. Brilliant. Cheers. Whew. Good fun. Have a have a drink. <laughs> yeah.